It was funny. You don't know this, but I was uh, trying to record a series this morning, probably the first one in the series, called uh, <laughs> Principles of Life and uh, from the Basic Youth Conflict Seminars. And uh, it was interesting. I got my camera set up over on a different wall and it's a place where I want to put up a chalkboard and kind of and a kind of a little scrolling thing. Well not scrolling but a yeah. Just an area where I can, you know, put a chalkboard basically. Keep notes, you know, and kind of things to focus on. Not for me, but you know, to, for people to kind of reinforce what's being said. Because a lot of times people get distracted, you know, and they don't pay attention and <laughs> go off on tangents. So I know that this is a deep subject, which is why I'm so persistent in wanting to follow up on it, you know, right away. And so I went ahead and, you know, I, I've been pushing forward even though I'm not quite ready with it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm ready as far as the material is concerned, but not the presentation, not having like a chalkboard. So I got chalk, but I have no chalkboard. <laughs> don't have the money, right? And can't find a cheap one. So anyways, I uh, started this video, you know, and started recording, and I'm talking away, you know, and, uh, just like normal, you know, I'm talking about Jesus and sharing this and sharing that, and the first one was about assurance of salvation, so I'm, back in my mind, I'm thinking of that, you know, and the things that God had told me about, you know, kind of how people, you know, get distracted and all this kind of thing when I was in the shower this morning, you know, how they, they don't really understand that they're saved, much less if they're saved, or what they should be doing, or confirming or whatever it is that they do. So I was kind of like, well, you know, Lord, you know, I'm busy talking away and at the same time my mind, I'm kind of there, you know, it's interesting video, but about, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour into it or maybe an hour and a half, who knows. <laughs> so I went, I, you know, this isn't any good. I don't want to do this, you know, this is wrong. So I quit. And then I, the Lord said, yeah, you know, kind of one of those things between God and I that whenever I'm recording a video and I know that it's wrong, when I get done with it, I just go, no. Yeah, God just closes the door. It just doesn't feel anointed. doesn't feel like it's sharing what He wants spoken. You know, If He doesn't inspire, I don't post it. <laughs> so the last hour and a half, I've been wasting my time. Not really. It kind of organized. It was, it was interesting. It was kind of fun to play with. So I enjoyed that, you know, I kind of enjoyed that part of it, at least in my morning routine. And now I'm back to where I should be, which is what God wanted me to do all along, was share the devotionals. And don't worry about the teaching part until it's ready. Because he did tell me this morning to wait, and I, of course, pressed on. <laughs> Some things I want to go ahead and do right away. In devotionals today, I am the Lord which sanctifies you, or I am the Lord which sanctifies you. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people, and you shall be holy unto me. For I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. Sanctified by God the Father, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. For their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. A lot of people tell me, and you know I'm dealing with this subject so I might as well mention it here, about this assurance of salvation. You know, how they have either assurance or no assurance. <laughs> And they need reassurance. And 
you know, I, for me it was pretty simple. It's like I'm either saved or I'm not. And if it's a, if I'm saved, then God did it. If I'm not saved, then God did it. Because frankly, I don't know. I mean, yes, I talk to Jesus. Yes, I pray. Yes, He talks to me. Yes, we've had lots of marvelous experiences together, and we've done lots of things together. Yes, I do know Him, or He knows me better than I know Him, but I know Him a little bit. And in all the ways that most people say you have assurance, yes, I have faith. I'm not worried about that person. But the point is, God could do whatever He wants to do at any time He wants to. So if God decided after I die that, for whatever reason, I'm not saved, I'm not saved. And if God decided that I am saved, I am saved. I've always had that kind of realization that it's God that does it. God sanctifies us. We don't sanctify ourselves. We participate with Him. We work out our salvation of what He's working inward in us so that way it is manifested outwardly to other people so that they can see the good works and give glory to God our Father who is doing the work in us. It's not us doing it. And I think that's where people get confused is that they, they somehow think being saved involves their feelings. No, God can give you feelings that come and go anytime He wants to. He can change the heart of the king and hold it in his hand in terms of which way he chooses, according to Proverbs. So your feelings, you know, he can turn them around any way he wants to. Just ask him. So salvation isn't a matter of feeling assured, and it's not a matter of just faith, I name it, claim it thing, you know, because it's not enough about faith, because faith in something isn't enough. It's faith of someone that you choose to believe what he said. He's the one doing it. He will present you faultless before the Father and blameless before God. Now, how he does it is why people try to put all these scriptures out there and say, well, you know, you can have this assurance by memorizing the scripture from 1 John, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. He who hath the Son hath life. He who hath not Son, God hath not life. But what if you don't have the Son? <laughs> do, you, do you see how that works? In other words, I was always the one who could see a loophole with what they were trying to tell me was an assurance. When I said, well, that's not much of an assurance. So the realization is that if you have a relationship, then you could ask someone, hey, are we okay? And God would say, yeah, we're okay. In other words, if you ask your wife, are you married? She'll say, yes, we're married. See, here's the ring on my finger. You know, and you go, okay. But if you're constantly asking God or asking your wife, are you married? She's going to think you're stupid after a while, isn't she? Because you made an agreement. You got married. And the only reason you would have no assurance of that isn't because of a ring on the finger, but it would be because you two aren't together anymore. It would be because you separated. It would be because you're long distance. Do you get the picture now? You see, if you're not communicating with your wife, how do you know you're married? If you're not spending time with your wife every day, how do you know you have a wife? If you don't see your wife, if you don't have some type of conjugal visits, <laughs> then what makes you married? You know what I mean? In some ways, that contract that you've made is a realization that salvation is also a contract that God made. He made a contract that he said was everlasting that you didn't have to worry about. His contract was that if you believe and you receive, then you will be saved. But if you don't believe and you don't receive, you ain't going. <laughs> because Jesus did it, you get it. But if you don't do it, he ain't going to get it. So you're going to get it from him who's going to give it to you, and you ain't going to get where you thought you were going to go. You get it? <laughs> so, solve it. Get a relationship. You know, I mean, it's nice to have this faith in religious ideas, you know, and it's nice to have kind of a faith in what people are telling you, but the only person's going to know is God. And until you talk to God direct and you get response from Him direct, you ain't going to have an assurance. You can tell me till the cows come home that you have faith enough to have reassurance. And someone's going to come along and shake you to your core because it doesn't involve faith. It involves what God says to you. And until you get that straightened out in your life, 
you're going to always be nervous about it. You're always going to kind of wonder, well, you know, did God choose me or not choose me? Did God sanctify me or not sanctify me? Is God presenting me faultless before the Father? Does he enjoy Or is he just kind of like, you know, i got to claim these promises and make sure that I claim them right and I claim them in the, in the name of Jesus and I claim them and I claim them and do it the right way in the right format and the right formula and do all these other things. No, you don't. No, you don't. You just got to talk to God. God, hey, look, are we okay? <laughs> if we're not, tell me. You know, show me in the Word. What am I, what am I doing wrong? And he will. That's the point. You see, Jesus brought relationship for the realization of the Word of God becoming alive in us. It's not a question of, I can leave God out of the equation and now I just program all these words from Scripture into my head and I just program this religion into my mind and I program this stuff into my heart and I program these actions into my soul and then I'll be a Christian because I don't need the relationship part. I just need the programming. No, that's not what sanctified holy is from Jesus. I have sanctified you, we just said. It's God who is the one who sanctifies you, not your belief in God. It's not your effort in believing what Jesus has done that causes salvation. God is the one who does. You just open the door to a relationship that is now a two-way street where you begin to communicate and make a connection with God. So, to put it bluntly, although the other things are nice, they're going to take you like step by step, little bitty steps at a time so that you kind of got these realization steps where it's like, okay, according to this scripture, according to that scripture, if I lay all these scriptures together, then I've got this ladder that's going up to heaven, I'm going to get so close to get God that I'm going to hear him speak. You don't have to. You can ask him. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and door shall be open to you. Jesus was asked by that thief hanging on a cross, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he says, Hey, man, you're going to be with me in paradise. He asked. He talked to. He had a relationship with. Even if it's just communication. That's your point. You are sanctified by God, but not because I say it now. When you read it, when you apply it, when you discover for yourself in a personal relationship, then it applies. But if the Holy Spirit isn't really like, you know, kind of bringing it to that place, let me explain something to you. You can tell me you're married to your wife. You can show me the ring on your finger. You can show me the marriage certificate, but until you show me your wife, I don't think you're married. I just think you think so. So, I want to see who you have to prove that you're married. Because that's what First John said. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. If you don't have the demonstration, of, the demonstrative proof to yourself that Jesus is in you and He is alive with you and you are communicating to Him in some way and you can tell someone that, um, will you please go to church and you know, like talk to some pastors? Will you please seek out some Bible studies? Will you please look on the internet and begin to develop what we call a relationship with God so that you will know whether you're saved or not? Because if you don't have some kind of demonstrative way of knowing and proving that you are a Christian to yourself, then I question whether or not you're saved. Because he who has the Son has life. But he who has not the Son of God has not life. And he is alive in you. He is working with you. He is working out your salvation from inside out. But there also ought to be some communication between the two of you. And if you don't have it, that's where you need to start. And make sure you got it. And until you got it, you need to go get it. Do you get it? Do you understand? If you don't have that, you need to go get it. That will reassure you of salvation. It's not enough to just kind of like go, well, you know, I, I've done all the motions, I've gone through the motions, you know, but I can't really show them. I can't really tell anyone. I can't really explain to anyone that I am a Christian. No, I'm a Christian because I go to church. 
Yeah, and I'll bet you're married too. Show me your wife. Now, show me your life. And I'll show you if you're a Christian. 